So this right here is something I've struggled with because I love Final Cut Pro in Mac, but if you've ever done any transfers in Mac or even Windows for that matter, they can be slow when you do network attached storage. This video explores how to do Synology, the box, directly to a Mac in this instance. You can do this for Windows and Linux as well, but I just want to go ahead and preface this that it's really meant for a direct connection, skipping and basically getting rid of the switch. And how I've done this is I have about four different regular Ethernet ports right here. This is all one gigabit. And this right here, the LAN 5, is a full blown 10 gig connection. I also have another 10 gig connection in here because most Synology 10 gig cards come with two ports. This one is actually a whole different network that I set up for this specific purpose. Now, if we look right over here, you'll see that this is what it looks on the backside. Don't judge me on the cables, <laughs> but I just wanted to kind of preface this kind of setup. The one goes to the cable, that, that top port goes directly to the switch, and then the bottom port directly goes into that 10 gig box that you see right over there. So let's diagram this real fast. I'm gonna make two boxes. The first one's gonna be the NAS, which is Synology, FreeNAS, QNAP, whatever you name it. And this is gonna be directly connected to our second box, which is gonna be our Mac. And we got a Mac Mini. But also on that backside with that picture, you'll probably notice that second box coming out. How I connect up that Mac Mini, it has a regular one gig connection that's connected to the network, so it actually comes out. And the NAS over here actually comes out. So when I need to get internet traffic or another thing on the network, it would go through this one gig line. So you can see the 10 gig line is established right between the NASs, and the NAS itself has another 10 gig line attached right there. The Mac mini has just another one gig line because I can't attach two 10 gig ports. I guess I could, but it'd be prohibitively expensive to get two of those boxes and they run really hot. So I don't think I want to do that. And then we have the switch right here. So that's how the actual diagram is set up. If you can read my chicken scratch there, but just right here, 10 gig line direct. And this is a straight cable. A lot of people from 10 years ago remember crossover cables. Technology's evolved. Anything with like one to 10 gig connections are smart. You can do straight cables, crossovers, kind of a dead thing. And then on the switch over here, you can kind of see the 10 gig connection hit tying in. And for internet traffic on the Mac, it's just gonna go right through the switch over here. So to set these two connections up, what we have to do is this is the full one directly to the switch, which is already set up. The secondary 10 gig connection, this is something special though. Right here, I went ahead and just filled these two in. For the gateway, I just used the router. You can actually leave these completely blank if you want. And then I did something special because this is a straight connection. I went ahead and enabled jumbo frames by changing the MTU value to 9,000. This is really important because we could push through a lot more, a lot heavier packets, jumbo packets, and get a lot more information per send, which is really, really important. You can't just enable this all willy-nilly on a network either. So if this was connected up to a switch, everything on the entire network would have to be jumbo frames. The switch would have to support it. Every single client would have to support it. And for a home network, it's just a nightmare. You're just not gonna get that set up. So that's why another big benefit to doing a direct connection is we can mess with the MTU values. Now on the actual Mac, we come on over to our preferences. You can see the Thunderbolt SWAT manually. Now this is really important when you're filling this one in on the 10 gig connection, it's important that they're on a separate network. So it's not the 69 network, it's the dot 11 network and the subnet is the same. So that's, that's exactly right. I highly recommend doing these settings right here. You can use them, but do not ever fill in router DNS servers or search domains on this connection. You want this connection to only be for this box and everything else the Mac's gonna see and go, oh, there is no router or DNS here. So I'm gonna use the other ethernet connection, which is just DHCP, and it's gonna go out the end network, or if it needs to hit something else on the network that's not this box, it can go ahead and go through this one gig connection. So with that done and set up, let's go ahead, pull up our 
terminal and we're gonna go two tests, one through the one gig connection to our 10 gig and then the 10 gig direct connect. Here is the one gig connection. We'll go ahead and do an iPerf. I have an iPerf server sitting on the box, the NAS box, and then I'm using this client, which is the Mac mini to connect to it. You see, you get a little over hundred megabits per second because it is LACP and it does have every optimization. So we're able to get just a hair over that one gigabyte mark, which is pretty awesome. But now let's go to the 10 gig direct connection with jumbo frames. And if we look over here, right before I run this test, I wanna just put, as far as the hardware goes, make sure MTU's also set on your Mac specifically this one to jumbo a very important that these settings are adhered to to match the synology box just to let everybody know so when you see this next test you'll see what it's doing and here is the next test this is direct connection let's see what we get as far as our speed and there we go so we get about five times the amount of data rate we do have some data loss we're not getting that full 10 gig pipe but that's to be expected uh there's a lot of other things we could also test this without jumbo frames to see what's happening but i like jumbo frames because i do a lot of large files so that's why i, I enable that you can sometimes trick these iperf tests with removing jumbo frames and things of that nature. So let's go ahead, remove jumbo frames and see what happens. All right, that should be back up. We're gonna go ahead and rerun the test. This one is without jumbo frames. And there we go. You see a little bit of a bump there. Like I said, iPerf isn't the whole story. It just kind of gives you a little bit of a bead of what's happening here and for me, that's why I was like, okay, it's pretty good, but I'll probably go ahead and re-enable those jumbo frames as I'm working with huge files and the bigger the packet, typically the better off I'll be. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a, a behind the scenes of how to directly edit or work with really, really large files and how I set up a direct connection on top of just a regular NAS connection. You can do all this through the network, but you're gonna lose something unless you have a really, really nice switch. There are some good switches out there that where you could do like LACP and then do the full linker aggregation with this and get even better performance. However, my switch is rather cheap. It's about $300. Even with the 10 gig connection, it, you're gonna lose a little bit more than what it's worth. And I couldn't use jumbo frames because of everything else on my network and I didn't want to segregate it off into its own thing. So that's why I do what I do and how you can use just a kind of a mod modest budget here to get full 10 gig and jumbo frames without having to really break the bank. You can use any switch really and uh, still do this because you're not using the switch for the 10 gig connection between the NAS box and the production PC. But with that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Uh, and uh, how do you do it as far as full speed? You know, when you're working with large files and you don't have a whole lot of storage, which these Macs are terrible for local storage unless you just fork over thousands of dollars. But me, I'm cheap. I ended up going with a very base level Mac Mini M1, which has been all right. It's not been terrible. It's not been, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Like some people are saying, it's good for 800 bucks but not really great. And with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.